<laughs> yeah, I had a Okay, so in in my breakfast I w- there was um bell peppers, corn, on a sandwich? Uh butter, some cheese I think as well. On a sandwich. And it was like buttered on both sides and it was toasted. Like on one of those grill thingies. I know what a, a sandwich and is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah, I had that on a sandwich. <laughs> that was my breakfast. That's crazy. Yeah. You know what I had for breakfast? What? A high five. A high five? Yeah. It is 2.46 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. In my culture, that is brunch time. I ha, think. ha. No, it's, not. it's lunch time. In, well, in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just had a small lunch and it was no, very... No, you had lunch. I had two bites. I... I'm not, I'm, I'm not even, yeah, it was tasty. Thank you. Whatever it was, it was tasty. <laughs> Whatever it was, I told you what it was. No, as in like, w- if, it would, if it would constitute as lunch or brunch or whatever, it was tasty as heck. So thank you. I wish we were reviewing a food film. A food film? Yeah. I have the perfect movie for that. Which is? Chef. No, I hated Chef. You hated Chef? I hated Chef. It's so profane. What do you mean by that? Too much of the swear. Oh, all of oh, the cuss. Okay, I Watch see. Watch your mean. profanity. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last film you saw? I don't know. What was the last film? Parasite. Probably. What was the last film we saw? Parasite. Then Parasite was the last film. Luckily, we're reviewing it today. Hey guys, this is Sid. Hi, I'm RJ. And this is Couple of Cinephiles. Welcome back. <laughs> so yeah, today we are reviewing Parasite. Mm, last week we had a bit of a comedy moment this week we're taking it back to serious film i wouldn't really say that oh it's a serious film like it's it's a comedy kind Mm -hmm. of it's a comedy thriller well in my notes i did ask is this a dramedy no no i mean it's a (laughs) thrillity so i guess there are aspects of drama but i don't think it's a drama i think it's more it's closer to thriller than what it is to oh yeah. drama. It does start off with a with a lot of drama, with a lot of um, how would you say um, showing the difference between so- between society, I guess. Between society, the rich people and the poor people, like yeah, both okay, different societies. Establishing it's not a drama. You have to establish a narrative before you can start with a skit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know I am. That's why we started this podcast. <laughs> How many how many episodes do you think I've said th- I've said that in? I think all, <laughs> possibly, except for nineteen seventeen, which because I wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to be back oh again. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so Parasite, my guy. Mm-hmm. This film has all genres except horror, in my opinion, but it mm, does have like horror aspects to it. I don't know because it's pretty gory. Speaking of gory, we have some trigger warnings, you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are very sensitive to gore, scares, abuse, <sighs> human remains, I guess, this might not be the best film for you to watch. Mm-mm. It is, I think, rated 15. It is R-rated, actually. Oh, it's R-rated. Yeah, it's Fantastic. Just, in, just in Dubai, it's 16 plus for some reason. That's weird. Um, but, but only because like Dubai is, uh, or Arabian countries are known for cutting scenes. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Um, so but maybe but there's something we didn't see. Yeah, but even through that, um, we saw a lot of... Intense things. Yeah. So definitely, if you are below the age of, of 16, I'd say stay away from this one for now. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. um, so th- there's obviously gore and violence in this film, mm-hmm. but we should also address the fact that there is some sexual content, if not in terms of what's viewed as in terms of what they talk about. Yeah. Dialogue-wise. Yeah. Uh, a lot of profanity. Yeah, 100%. And alcohol and drug use. Mm-hmm. And of course, a, a spoiler warning for all of those who haven't seen it. It is quite a new film. Mm-hmm. Big time spoiler warning. Because th- this film takes a turn where no one sees it going. Yeah, 100 It takes many turns. Mm-hmm. So yeah, spoiler warning and trigger warnings. Did it, did, 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 done. Okay, so I have a very important question to ask you. Mm-hmm. What do you think the parasite, quote unquote, is in this film? Yeah, um, I think it's 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 a very literal term. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and going based off of what we see in this film, I think the parasite is the husband of the caretaker. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, okay. The okay. guy who was living in the basement yeah. all those years. Um, he is the actual parasite. You think so? Well, even though... It, 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 it's tricky. Stick to an answer, my guy. It's, it, it, that is my answer. Okay. It's not, my Full answer's not stop. changing. Then don't like go... <laughs> that's your answer. That's my answer. Okay. But I was just going to say... <laughs> <laughs> that it's, it's tricky because... Um, the wife has been like... Actually paying for all that... All the food that he's been eating and everything. And... B- he's not really a... Pa- it's... Yeah, it's tricky. But... It is what it is. That's your answer? That's my answer. I don't b- agree with you. <laughs> Why not? I think the Kim family is the parasite. Really? Mm-hmm. How so? It latches on in a, in a small manner through Kevin. I, I can't remember what his his Korean name is, but mm-hmm. um, because his friend Min introduces him to the family as a tutor, even though he's not really a tutor, And that's where it starts. It starts with him and then goes into Jessica and then that becomes the driver and that becomes the maid. And like they just infiltrate the family piece by piece and take over their lives. Literally, when the family leaves their home, they take over their lives. That's a very good point. I think they're the parasite. They're they're definitely the, the bad guys as well. Yeah, it's strange. We see the most of them, but they're not the protagonist. So there goes your theory. No, they are the protagonist. But they can't be the protagonist and antagonist of the film. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The protagonists are the Kim family, specifically Kevin, because we see most of the film through his his eyes. His eyes. His eyes. (laughs) Hi. I don't think he says hi once in the film. (laughs) Maybe he does. So, but uh, said I think. (laughs) So we, we, we see most of the film through his eyes and the, the, the film even ends with his narration, with him talking about wanting to get back to see his but father. It, he cannot and be a protagonist and an antagonist. Answer the question. Antagonist doesn't necessarily mean bad guy. A protagonist doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean good guy. I protagonist don't know. That's just not what means I learned in theater school. Theater school is different than film school. It's, narr- it's narrative. Nuh uh. Yeah. Huh. I mean, n- narrative, sure, but... Okay, but, but, sweetie. But theater no, 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 no. Listen to me quickly. When you have a story to tell and you want it on a stage, what do you write? A play? A stage play. A stage play. When you have a story that you want to tell on screen, what do you write? A screenplay. What word is in both of those? Play. It's the same... Thing. No, it's not. Yes, it <laughs> no. is. No, because yes, it is. Because, because it's a story. Because see, here's the thing: it it a film isn't made through just a screenplay. Would you agree with? No. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a, a lot play more. is also not just a play. Fine, fair enough. But but here's the thing: I, in a film, th- there's more to it. There's the cinematography and editing. The the two more. Oh, two and a stage play doesn't have stage direction and lighting either. Well, if, if we're going through, thing. if we're going down that route, then even a film has uh, blocks and beats and action and also lighting. Yeah, so <laughs> does a play. A play also has directors and producers <laughs> and maybe not cinematographers, but stage directors. The, the reason I brought up the cinematography and editing point is because the entire story can be shifted with just the way it's been shot and edited. Yeah, and the whole story can be shifted by an actor changing his tone. You're making a moo point. It's not a moo point. <laughs> Let me tell you why. It is. Because the It has nothing to do with this, the film that we're reviewing. It very much does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Can we get back on track, please? I was trying to bring it back. I don't know. <laughs> <That's a thing. laughs> if you Hulk just hear me out. Angry. Just hear me out. That's the first time we've used one of these on the podcast. This is how I'm treated. (laughs) (laughs) Come on. 
<laughs> that was a lucky guess. I couldn't remember what that button did. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but here's the thing. At least the audience supports <clears throat> me. The audience is clapping for me. No, they're clapping for me. Because you pressed the button. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but as I was saying... Let us know in the comments whose side you're on. Mm-hmm. As I was <laughs> saying... <laughs> the reason I say that the Kim family is the protagonist and the bad guys is because... Okay, they're the protagonist because we see the film through their eyes. Fine. Right? Whatever. That's general rule of thumb for... Okay, film, you right? made your point. Move on. And the antagonist is the caretaker. The, the lady. I forget her name. She's the worst guy. No, she definitely no? is not worse than the Kim family. W- uh, worse in the sense, okay, not worse. Yeah, Thinking not about worse. it, not worse. They're so much worse. They, they are murderers. True that. She is not. True that. But she still is also a bad guy. Because uh, in, in my, in my Why? Eyes, because she's trying to feed her husband? Through illegal ways. Okay. Have you ever done anything illegal, Sid? No. Nope. Don't talk crap. Except for like, I'm probably going to edit this out, but except for like... Shoplifting? <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> okay. Stealing, what, one bar of candy? Did you hear that, Mr. Sampat? Your son is a vandal. She's not worse than the Kim family. No, she's not. You're right. She's just trying to... Take care of her husband, who's a hermit, and also has the scariest face I have ever seen. My word. Yep. He is terrifying. Nightmares. Hala. <laughs> when you were eating my popcorn in the theatre, how many of my popcorns did you eat? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about it. This film. Oh, I was hooked. I... I from the start, it started off slow, but the narrative that it set, the, the, the world that they built, had me hooked. Mm. I, was, I, w- I wanted to know more about the characters, I wanted to know, ab- know more about their living situation, how their lives lead. It, throughout the whole film, I, th- there never was a point where I wasn't interested. Can and I just ask you, do you think that it is an accurate representation of what society is? I would say it is very close, if not accurate. So to me, the way that the Kim family lives before they find the Park family, that I can see that being a reality for a lot of people. You know, like you need to sit at a certain spot in your house to bum free Wi-Fi off a nearby cafe. Um, And like everything is on top of each other and you all sleep on the floor. Like I can see that being a reality for many people. We are very blessed to not have to be in that situation. But I know for a fact that that is something that happens it's something that happens in my home country all the time i i agree yeah but on the flip side the way that the park family lives is also very accurate Mm -hmm. in in terms of societal wealth they are very popular they the husband is never home um the wife just wants to do right by everyone and kind of becomes a hover mother like that's exactly how i would picture a well off family to run yeah, I, I've seen I've seen that happen. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying that <laughs> I come from that family. I very much don't. Um, but I, I have seen uh, people like her. Yeah, fri- yeah, friends of the family who I guess live like that, and it's it's kind of unfortunate to see for the ha- children for the children. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to to see how how badly affected they are they are because mm. of it. Well, if you look at the little boy, um, Da Song. He suffers from some intense mental retardations because of the fact that he's he doesn't grow up in a, a social environment. He has many quote unquote friends that are children of his mother's friends, and he's mm. homeschooled and home tutored by very particular people, and everything has to be like super protected and super like boxed in. I feel very sorry for him. More so than I feel sorry for his big sister. Like, she at least has a social life of her own. And I'm sure that when Dasang would have grown up, um, he would have had a similar situation where he had friends or whatever. But as a 9 or 10-year-old, I can't exactly remember how, how old he was, but he was quite young. I feel for him. 
seeing that innocence in him and and watching him go through all that he does go through especially in the climax of the film was pretty heartbreaking stuff mm. um and and also because of that one particular shot that <coughs> still scares the bejesus out of us <laughs> oh yeah 100% i can i can imagine having the worst anxiety ever yeah mm. so nine yeah okay um only because of like minutia that i would have wanted to fix later like in the film mm, but we can discuss that later yeah we'll get to that what about you me eight eight mm mm-hmm. what's up with the two missing points so i'm very particular when it comes to my psychological thrillers which i very much think this is mm-hmm. um it has some funny moments but no film is ever just one genre so if i had to pick one i would place it in psychological thriller for sure but i am very picky with when it comes to character development, story arc, um representation of mental illness like those things are very important to me. And let me just these guys did an amazing job. They really did. It was outstanding. Performances were great, direction was amazing. Of course it was. I mm-hmm. mean, I would have liked to see more tragedy. More tragedy? Yeah. It was look, the the second and third acts were heavy in the in the tragedy, but I don't know. I feel like it was all very circumstantial. I wanted mm. to see more aftermath. I wanted to see more ricochet. Oh, I see. Uh, and so rather than just jumping off into how it affects the Kim family. Yeah, yeah. Show um, me about like show me the actual effects that it had on the Kim family. So, where is what what is Kevin's actual mindset after everything that happened because being a part of what he was a part of would have had some terrible after effects. I agree. So the only person whose after effects we really get to see is the dad. The yeah, fact right. that he becomes a hermit. Mm-hmm. But we don't see anything else. I I think I think at that point it, it was just like they wanted to end the story and I just kind of No, I get that, but mm-hmm. I feel like there was still room for a little bit of movement but that's just my opinion mm-hmm. said mm-hmm. i'd like to tell you about the music of this film i'm all ears so the guy who plays kevin mm-hmm. koi wusik composed slash wrote a song with the film composer for the film where, where, where was it used that's in the end credits they say that it was like for the fans right mm. very interesting Yeah. The song's name is Soju One Glass or a glass of soju depending on how accurate your translation is and how direct your translation is. Mm-hmm. What what one of my favorite things about this film was the OST, for sure. What's OST? Original soundtrack. Oh. I should have known that. <laughs> well, now the audience also knows. The OST in my opinion was very playful. Um Okay. <laughs> and 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 I and I'm I'm going to talk about a, a one particular scene mm-hmm. where I really felt the most playful. Um so it's not like that in the whole film obviously, but I'm going to call it the peach fuzz scene. Ooh. That was a good <laughs> scene. That in my opinion was the most fun montage I've ever seen. Okay. Um mainly because of how it was edited. The peach fuzz scene in my opinion was my most my most favorite montage scene ever. Mm-hmm. Because it didn't feel like a montage. Does that make I sense? I get yeah, I didn't know it was a montage. Yeah. The music that was used in in the montage w- was very playful. It was very upbeat mm. in a sense. Mm. Especially when they're talking about pretty much poisoning a woman because of her allergies. Mm. Um so this montage had like story elements and beats to it w- with dialogue that makes it seem like their plan could fail at any moment. Um it didn't seem like it was like 100% well thought out plan but th- and they had to improvise that to do things on the go and and yeah it it was well edited there there was more more time for scenes in in different locations to play out it didn't just it didn't just cut from one scene to another it didn't just transition it flowed very it nicely it flowed very well mm-hmm. and um and there's one thing that stood out was this was was the music was very subtle in making in telling us how we should feel and this is why we end up rooting for the kim family yeah which Because we shouldn't be doing we we really shouldn't but but whenever they're doing something either illegal or messed up immoral <laughs> immoral definitely um the music is still upbeat mm. like okay yeah things are in motion things are going well 
when they shouldn't. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I could go on and on about the montage scene. Yeah, so the the way that sounds were used during the film, I think, had a very, like you said, had a very big part to play in the fact that we fall in love with the Kim family because mm-hmm. um, they're normal. They're just like us. They hang out with their family all the time. They're friends. They are siblings. So my one of my favorite moments is actually a little made-up song that the siblings use in order to get quote unquote Jessica mm-hmm. hired mm-hmm. by the family but right. more about that later mm-hmm. so yeah we are very much convinced to like them mm-hmm. by the way that music was used in the film and, and because because th- there's so much happening in this film in terms of soundtrack how it was well incorporated into the into the edit um, the actors were so brilliant the story made perfect sense and there were proper beats to it and the fact that this film had different tones, but it was never conflicting. Like, it always flowed from one to the next. All of that was done brilliantly by my MVP, the director. And the reason that the, the director would be my MVP for this is because, like I said, he incorporates all of these aspects, music, cinematography, editing, actors, so brilliantly, and screenplay, which he was, he was one of the screenwriters as well. Um, he's my MVP, and... It, it's, it's a tough job, uh, being a director, uh, especially for, for this big a film where you, 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 go, you go from being a foreign language film to what winning Best Picture at the Oscars. Yeah, I love how at the BAFTAs it got Best, non, best Film Not in an English, mm-hmm. Best n- Not English Film or something, something like that. Right. And then at the Academy Awards, they were like, <laughs> Best <laughs> Film. It, it, it um, very much deserved the award. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, I was listening to a review podcast the other day. That it wasn't necessarily about Parasite, but they were discussing the Academy Awards and how when oh, what's his name, Bong Bong Joon Ho, Bong Joon Ho, when Bong Joon Ho said you would open your your eyes up to so many more amazing things if you could just get past the two inches of text at the bottom of the screen. When he said that, I'm obviously paraphrasing, I have no idea what he said, Mm -hmm. but something along those lines. I realized how we've been closing ourselves up to films that are in English for so well, we speaking from a Western viewpoint Mm -hmm. have been doing that because we don't want to put in the work of, of reading the subtitles. When I moved to Dubai on my plane, over here I decided to watch an Italian film for very selfish and not necessarily worth the discussion reasons I decided to watch an Italian film and I was so encapsulated by the story and all I had to do was read and I love reading like Mm -hmm. if you don't like reading then you probably don't understand film but (laughs) oof, that was a hobbler I'm so sorry to our non-readers but that's my general, that's how I feel. Um, there's so much more to story than what you see. So, yeah, yeah, definitely feel that way. Anyway, yeah, I definitely deserved the title that I got. And, and who's your MVP, by the way? Da Song. Really? Mm. If, I, if I could open my, um, my eyes a little to behind the scenes thing, which is your, your field, mm-hmm. I would definitely go into the screenwriters the way that they depict character arcs and, and mental illness, like I said earlier. They did a really good job, and I, I believe that they did their research quite well and all based a lot of it off of personal experience, which isn't unheard of. But from a character standpoint, the song was my favorite. You know, come to think of it, I hadn't really thought about how well the kid acted. So well, and we don't see a lot of him, mm-hmm. but the moments that we see him, he is either comic relief mm-hmm. or gives us so much information about who the family is and where they come from and how their relationships play off each other he loves his father so much that he forces him to watch him sleep in the tent because at least he's close enough you know what i mean like there are so many little things that the kid does that gives us so much info about their lives and the way that they conduct themselves yeah and, and speaking of the father he is in my opinion oh, uh, the Park Parks family, rather, family. Yeah. yeah. He is one of the warmest characters. You think? Yeah. I don't. You don't? Who is the warmest character for you? The original housekeeper. The original housekeeper, okay. Mm. 
I think she was very, she just wanted everybody to be happy all the time. She did her part and more so and took care of her hermit husband who lives in the basement. Yeah, I think she was the warmest character for very selfish reasons, mm-hmm. but the warmest nonetheless. Mm-hmm. There, there's something that, that uh, people have picked up on, mm. which uh, the, the director has confirmed, mm-hmm. is that they have used just subtle imagery in the film that depict the difference or at least the, uh, the disconnect between the, the rich and the middle class or the, poor, or, or the lower class, which was just... I'll just give a, a, a visual example. When the original housekeeper is talking to the Park family's mother, and she's just what sleeping in the in the in their backyard. Yeah, um, she's sitting by the table. Yeah. Um, there's just a line in the window pane um, between them. Yeah, showing that divide. Showing that divide. You're right. And um, also at the same time, where that line is is also. Not exactly on it, but just off of it. Mm-hmm. The line from where the sun hits and where the sun doesn't hit. Ooh. And they are the, the, the park's mother is in the sun and the housekeeper isn't. I hadn't noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> it's genius. They did a really good job with it. It's, like, it's almost like artistry, it's little subtle hints. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I also noticed is how, and I, I saw it on the internet, I can't remember where, but I did. At the dining room table... The entire, oh, the majority of the dining room table is is shot when there's only two people sitting at it, mm-hmm. and one of the characters has their back turned towards us. But the amount of chairs that can be seen is the amount of people who actually live in the house, mm-hmm. and I thought that was really interesting. So there's two extra chairs at the table for people who don't live there by their knowledge, mm-hmm. but that live in the basement. Mm-hmm. It's it's just these subtle things that. Even though it doesn't add anything to the story, it just adds so much to the subconscious of the viewer. Yeah, um, it's great. I, re- I remember watching the film and think and thinking about the the dining table scenes. Um, I was just thinking, I, I would have done this differently. So if you could have changed anything, mm-hmm. and you probably would have changed something, mm-hmm. what should have been changed? I would have. I would have changed. The action in the driving scene. What do you mean? Um, so when Mr. Kim is driving around Mr. Park, um, he often turns around to talk to him. Mm. And f- for sometimes more than a few seconds. Mm, yeah, um, it's not safe. Yeah, very much not. It, it I mean, they're not really driving, but still. <laughs> um, and the thing is, like, even in the dialogue, they do make a note of it where Mr. Park says, like, says to him, keep your eyes on the road. Mm. But he only ever says it once, and he doesn't make a big deal of it. I mean, if, if he's as well-known as he is, he, as influential as he is, he's going to be more careful about his safety, mm. right? Um, I, I just wouldn't have him turn around. Like, people can have a conversation in the car without turning around to look at the person. I think I would have had him turn around once, based on your mm-hmm. thing. I would have had him turn around once so that Mr. Kim can say, keep your eyes on the road, and then have, you know, like how often in movies they do that, like, the um, review mirror glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would have had more than more of that then mm-hmm. going off of your suggestion. Yeah, like that that would have made more sense rather than just mm. have him turn around every fifteen seconds and look back for two seconds. Mm. Like a lot can happen in those two seconds. Like, so yeah, one hundred percent, a lot can happen in two seconds. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of characters in this film, mm-hmm. and they all have their own separate story arcs. Mm-hmm. If you could have. Yeah. What should you have changed that would have made the film better? You know, that sounds an awful lot like a segue I would use. Um, I didn't steal this from you, though. Not at all. <laughs> Not at <laughs> all. Um, if I could have changed anything that would have made the film a little better from my standpoint, what should I have incorporated differently? I think, like I said earlier, I would have done a little bit more focus on the, the aftermath and the tragedy that comes from murdering an entire family. Mm-hmm. Um, because as a human person, if you're not a sociopath, which I don't really believe the Kim family are filled with sociopaths, I think they're just opportunists, um, there would have been a lot of emotional ricochet. There would have been, quote-unquote, shrapnel yeah, that sure. stayed with them, scars that they wouldn't have been able to get rid of. And I was kind of left hungry for that humanization mm-hmm. on their behalf, I feel. Because like I said, the only person that we really see who is negatively affected 
afterwards is the father wh- when he then takes the, the place of the basement dweller in in this home but we don't really see any emotional baggage other than that mm-hmm. um we also don't really get an answer as to if the father was ever reincorporated into the family did kevin become successful did he do all of these things and if so i want to know how after all of that after everything you've done how don't you think it's interesting that they left it open-ended yeah i'm sure and that was a great artistic choice from Mm -hmm. a story perspective i just feel like they worked so hard throughout the entire film to remind us that these are just normal people everyday people wanting to lead better lives and then make them seem like absolute maniacs by the end (laughs) which again was a choice and i don't believe that it's the wrong choice i don't believe that it could have been chosen better it was a great choice but for me personally i hated them when i worked so hard not to um you're right like the the only they they do show the practical uh impacts that what the climax had over the family mm. that where the father had to hide in the basement yeah and the the death of of jessica mm. but that that's her fake name right? yeah i can't remember what her mm. her real name was yeah and and after after whatever happens like the the mother just kind of gets shoehorned to the side yeah like yeah then it's just a father son tale after that yeah like we, we we don't see her talk she's just there crying in in that one scene that's it like we don't we don't see uh, sh- and she had a very important role to play in all of this as well yeah she was like an evil mastermind man yeah she had a lot of plans and ideas that mm-hmm. brought them to the climax mm-hmm. and speaking of plans i have yeah. i have an interesting note that something something i picked up on in the film mm. but i want to hear your thoughts on it okay um so this was right after they all run away from the house where, where they all managed to escape and not yeah, get yeah. caught. Yeah, in the rain. In the rain. Um, mm. And the dad says, you guys go ahead, I, I've got a plan. He says to his kids. And, and the next day when they're all bunked up in the, ki- in the community center with all the other people whose houses were flooded. Mm. Um, I'm just going to paraphrase here. And the, but the dad says, the best plan is no plan. Mm. Because that way nothing can go wrong. Mm. What, what do you think about that? I think he very much already made his mind up that he was going to become the basement dweller. You think so? Yeah, I do. Because we see then later that as he's running out of the house, he makes a beeline Mm -hmm. for the garage. I think that was in his mind throughout. I think he knew things were going to go wrong and this is where he was going to go. And that's his plan. He wasn't lying. He did have a plan, just not for everybody. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I, th- you're right that there was no hesitation. Yeah, he had <laughs> no... He, it wasn't even a thought. He just went, zoop, to the side. Yeah, that's true. But but speaking of plans, again... <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> In the peach fuzz scene... Yeah, yeah. Um, they're talking about making a plan. And this is what... The only montage they have is to fire just this one person. Yeah. Every other time, like, it was very quick and seamless. Mm. And... Uh, and th- they they're they're eating pizza and they they say we need a plan to get her fired mm. and immediately like the next shot is of them putting hot sauce on their pizza mm. simple well edited we we know that they're going to use the, it wasn't even foreshadowing in my opinion it was just like that's what they're going to do yeah and immediately they address it and then their plan comes to fruition yeah pun intended very much well, fruition is not close enough to fruit for it to be a pun but we're talking about the peach fuzz scene but it's not close <laughs> enough to fruit for it to be a pun. I'm, I'm going to own it. I don't care. Okay, <laughs> you own it. Whatever. <laughs> now, do me a favor. Yeah? Slap me some skin. That was my high five. And also my breakfast. Mm-hmm. So, second breakfast? <laughs> Are you a hobbit? <laughs> I am quite tiny. Mm-hmm. But then <laughs> again, so are you. Oh, the disgust on Sid's face audience i wish you could see it so what's your high five subtle <laughs> let's just <laughs> move past that <laughs> um okay so i think i mentioned it a little earlier but the brother sister relationship that quote unquote jessica and quote unquote kevin have with each other is fabulous you can definitely tell that they grew up in close encounters and kind of they were each other's best friends 
they play off each other a lot. Their humor towards one another is seamless. And again, that little rhyme that they make up to remember the backstory is just priceless. I think that was very, very well done. That was my favorite. Can I try and sing it, but in English? Okay. <laughs> Jessica Cousins' classmate, um, Chicago, Illinois, and something else. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> you you're not in charge of the soundboard. For once I am. When you when you say that the the, the relationship that they have um as siblings, yeah. it it is pretty good. And and the relationship that they have with their parents as well is also pretty interesting. Yeah, again you can tell that they spend so much time together. Mm-hmm. The the one thing that I found very hard to grasp, mm-hmm. but I don't know what it's like in South Korea or certain families, but the fact that they curse so much in front of their parents, uh, the fact that they curse maybe sometimes at their parents. I think that's social commentary. I know many families are like who are like that. And if I can be completely honest, it's low-income families. It's it's the, the lower-class families who speak to and in front of their authoritative figures that way because you kind of lose, not respect, but like grasp on status when you're low class that's just my opinion uh, this uh, it's not necessarily true that's just what i've noticed mm-hmm. but yeah th- that was something that i that i noticed mm-hmm. but um even through that seeing how they all interact with each other mm-hmm. when they're drunk and they're just living their lavish lifestyle yeah and the, in the park family's house yeah yeah that was weirdly enough my high five moment that was your high five <laughs> that was um especially because of how quickly the film devolves into what we know as the thriller chaos yeah, yeah. um okay um so it, i wouldn't really say that it's it's them being a good family it's right that the transition it's from the that. calm before the storm it's the calm before the storm you're right yeah um because that whole scene made me feel very uneasy like it's too relaxed it's too yeah. laid back yeah i get that and the thing is that films have highs and lows just like a roller coaster mm-hmm. and and this film it cl- it, it dips for a long time in that scene. And we know that something, like, w- th- there's so much more Yeah, to the we're film. waiting in yeah. anticipation for yeah. what's next. And, and just them being themselves was way too calm. Yeah. And that was done really well. Yeah, yeah. Because of that sudden spike in intensity. Mm. Also, can I just say one thing? Yeah. I really want Ram Dahl. I am going to learn how to make it. And then we can have some on a, on a future episode. Nice. But, but, but that's why the film Chef is one of my favorite movies, because they made food look so good, just like they made Ramdon look so good in this film. Yeah, but in that case, watch Hell's Kitchen. It's better than Chef. And <laughs> less cussing. What? <laughs> yeah, I said it. You tell me, where's the lamb sauce? <laughs> Probably in one of the Oscars. Just hidden in there. Inside an Oscar? Yeah, like I just I can just imagine like Bong Joon Ho just like taking off the head of his Oscar and just pouring Lamb sauce? Yeah. Over his Ram dog. What absolute trash are you talking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. All I'm saying is this film deserved the awards that it won. Y- yes, it did, one hundred percent we've been over this. Then mm-hmm. this is a really bad segue yeah, <laughs> into my ne- into the next it was the worst segue. <laughs> yeah, you need to rush up on your comedy skills, my guy. You say with a huge smile on your face. It's a pity smile. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. But anyways, <laughs> keeping aside all the awards that it won, what would you nominate this film for? Okay, so all of the awards that it won are amazing awards 100 percent. i don't disagree with anything i don't think i can add anything (laughs) maybe original score because i think 1917 took original score joker oh joker took original score. no i would give joker the original score but this is a good runner-up um so in terms of actual real nominations i think the academy the 92nd academy awards did good Mm -hmm. yes for my personal made-up awards, mm-hmm. we can take a look back to the episode we did on Predestination. I think that was episode three. And 
The award that I gave it there, and please excuse my my language, is for best what the fuck moment. <laughs> that film really did it to me, but this one did it better. Amen to that. This one's WTF moment was better. And I'm speaking specifically when the original caretaker's husband comes up towards the family with his face bloodied, Mm -hmm. a big gash in his forehead and his eyes looking like they're falling out of his head, racing towards the family, ready to attack. That was my favorite. Basing it off of that scene is what I would also give my made-up award. Oh, yeah? Yeah, which is best of gore. It was so well done. Mm-hmm. Mm, very good. Um, that, 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 there was this one shot in this film, which I'm very glad that you had your eyes covered for it, mm. but I saw it in its entirety. And it's just, it's a wide shot of the husband coming up, picking up a rock and Smashing slamming the face it in. In, into Kevin's head. And it's, there's no cuts, it doesn't cut away, it shows the blood, it shows, it, it doesn't show his head caving in or anything because he survives. Yeah. And, but leaving it in, just showing it as is, I wasn't expecting it because up until then, they were like kind of hiding, the, they were kind of cutting away or they were hiding or just being the smart about it. Stuff, but yeah. They showed that. Best gore. Mm. For sure. I, I feel like there's a lot we're missing out on because we watched it in Dubai. Mm-hmm. But... For what we did see, mm-hmm. for what you did see, <laughs> I I think that's that's a good call. Yeah. Do you think that they would be able to remake this film? I hope they don't. In sincerity, I I really hope they don't. I think the creative choices that they made, they did good, and the fact that uh, the fact that we didn't see a dubbed version, which today I found that there's a dubbed version. Oh, heck. I'm glad we didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would have taken away from the story. I'm I'm glad that we saw it in Korean. Um, so no, I don't. I don't. I hope they don't remake it. Well, I've got some bad news for Not you. Not really. They plan on casting Mark Ruffalo in a remake. Why? White people everywhere. Speaking as a white person, why are we doing this? Why are we remaking foreign films? It's not necessary. You're doing it the Bollywood way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Bollywood remakes Hollywood films all the time. Yeah, but that's because of lack of originals, like, ideas. And Hollywood is doing the same. But by, at by least we have some original <laughs> ideas. So do we, but... Mm. Yeah. Oh, Ruffalo. I had so much respect for you, my guy. Ma- ma- good for ma- them. Honestly, good for them. If they feel like it's going to do well, it's all about money making. So, good for them. I don't think they'd be able to... Do, do this film justice at all if they were to remake it? No, I mean, here's to hoping that they at least include the original screenwriters and, and um, Wong Jun Ho in the creation of the film. But I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Personally, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember watching the, the trailer to this film, mm. um, like, a week and a half before we, we before we watched it, I just want to say, have you seen the trailer? Mm-mm. Okay, maybe maybe give it a watch later. But the trailer is so well made. It feels like the rich family, uh, the Park family, is the one that that's hiding a sinister secret. They are. They just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it 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 was made to seem as if they're they're the, 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 the bad guys. Yeah, they're, that they're the antagonists. Yeah. Um, and the bad guys. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if and if we're gonna talk about how trailers just for the sake of because we're a film podcast um oh we are i have no (laughs) idea this is how you edit trailers you show all the spoilers but you don't show anything and huh so the the the, the trailer kind of touches on some spoilers right but it's it's very subtle Uh uh-huh um nice so re-watching the trailer after you've seen the film yeah yeah, nice. very much so. It, it, it's like y- you don't realize it, mm. but it, it's only because the, the the director's like, "Ha ha, we're showing you this, but you don't know what you're what you're looking at." Yeah. Um, that that, that little play, that that switch, mm. making it seem like it's it's a thriller, but the other people are the bad guys mm. when they're really not, um, and not showing anything about the story, but 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 keeping 
things interesting enough to get the audience hooked, mm -hmm. that's how you do a trailer. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And and I want to see more of that wherever I go, like in Hollywood as well. Listen up, films. <laughs> Sid has some <laughs> things to say. Um, well, use it for your personal projects. Yeah, I plan on doing so. And that about sums it up, guys. That was Parasite. Mm -hmm. It was a time. Yeah, I think we will definitely do some newer films as well, but I I enjoy the dynamic that we've got going between some childhood favorites and some some new releases. But if you guys want us to do anything in particular, please do let us know. We are open to suggestions. Check out our Twitter and Instagram. I will be posting polls on there. And um, yeah, we really want to hear back from you guys. Mm -hmm. Follow us on our social media at cocinephiles. Or email us at cocinephiles at gmail.com. Can't wait to hear from you guys. We're affiliated with Double Dose Digital. Thank you so much for my company for letting us record and edit in studio. Mm -hmm. We really couldn't do this without you guys. Yeah, you're doing a great job with the edits, Sid. And you're doing a great job with social media. Thanks. All right, guys, tune in next week for whatever's next. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.